Hi, this is Tanner from SmartFantasyBaseball.com. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a more dynamic web query that will allow you to build something like maybe a, a player rater or a tool that you can link to um, some popular websites. Like the one I have in mind here is Razball.com. They've got a lot of really neat information on each of their player pages. So this is a coming a couple days after the end of the season, so certain things are showing up blank now in here. But one of the really neat tables they have on every page is this season stats table that shows you the player's last seven days, last 30 days, and then their last three seasons. So if my goal is to copy this into Excel, um, I want to kind of make a really neat Excel file that links to all the players in the major leagues and so what I'm going to do is go to smartfantasybaseball.com jump on over to some downloadable tools and I'm going to download the player ID Excel spreadsheet here and when that's done downloading I'm going to open that up and so you can see here, this is a pretty neat spreadsheet. It's got a bunch of different player IDs under the different systems for player IDs that are out there. And um, there's more information about this tool that you can get off of the website. But for now, I'm going to try to edit this thing. I'm going to add a new tab that I'll link to Razball. And I want to go out and try to grab this table for Miguel Cabrera. So I'm going to copy this web address and I'm going to go under the data from web area and proceed as if I'm going to make a web query. I'm going to paste in that address and let this page load. And then I'll scroll to that table I want to grab. So here it is right here. I'll click on the arrow that'll tell me that I can import that. And I'm going to save this web query. Um, I'll save right on top of the one I've already got there. This is just going to a folder on my desktop. And then I'm going to close out of here. Before I go and edit that, I just want to show you a couple of things here. So this player ID 1744 for Miguel Cabrera, just so we know where I'm coming from on the player ID map. If I look for that player ID, you can see that um, Miguel Cabrera and Razball, they're using what I believe is unique to Fangraphs, they're using the Fangraphs player ID 1744 to identify Miguel Cabrera. So that's where that number is coming from in the web address. And you'll also notice that if you wipe out the reference to Miguel Cabrera and try to load that page, it still brings you right back here. So really, the key part of the website is really just this part here. So if I go to the query file that I saved a little while ago. I saved that on my desktop. I'm going to right click on it and choose that I want to edit that with Notepad. And I'm going to wipe out this last part of the query terms here. So this file somehow tells Excel where to go and grab the table from from this website. And I'm going to just type something in here. And what's going to happen is Excel, when I load this query into Excel now, 
instead of going straight to Cabrera's page, it's going to ask me for what player ID do I want to go get this for. So I will save this file and close it now. And now if I come back over here, the first thing I want to do is set up a, a drop down. right off to the left here. So in cell B6, under the data column, I'm going to go to data validation. And I want a list of player IDs to show up in here. So it's going to ask me what source do I want for my player IDs. So I'll click on player ID map. And I want all the fan graph IDs to load in here. Actually, I want the names to show up in the list. I don't want the IDs because I don't know what the IDs are. So I want all the names to show up. So pick that in column B. And after I say OK to that, you can see I've got all the player names showing up in here. But now I also have to have in Excel somewhere where that player ID is actually going to pull up. So to do that, I'll use the VLOOKUP formula. And the way this works is I have to tell Excel, what do I want to go look up? So I'm going to have player IDs in here. So I want it to go look up whatever player name is in here. The second part is which table do I want it to go look it up in? So I told it to start here. This is the range that I want. So the VLOOKUP will look up inherently. It looks up in the first column of the table I tell it to. So I'm telling it, go look up the, in this column. Look for the player name. And then now which column do I want it to return? So I want it to pull back the player ID for the player I've selected. And that's going to be, this is the first column from what I selected, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So I'm going to just put a six in here. And then I think you're going to always want to say false for the last comment here. You can see Excel has built this formula here for me. It's going to go look in the player ID map table from columns player name to fan graph ID, from player name to fan graph ID, and it's going to pull back the sixth column. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the reason we say false here is because the player name that we select we only want an exact match. So if I say go get Jeremy Accardo's or Jose Altuve's player ID, it's going to go over into this tab and look for Jose Altuve. Now if you say true right here, or if you say, or if you leave it blank, which is an option, it'll go look for Jose Altuve, but it might stop on an approximate match. So if there's Jose Alvarez over there, it might say, oh, that's a pretty close match. I'm going to pull back Jose Alvarez's player ID, which we don't really want. We only want specifically Jose Altuve's exact player ID. So now you can see anytime I change this here, you get a change in the player ID. So now if I want to link in that RASBALL information, I'll say go in and give me an existing connection and I'm going to now go and browse for that IQY file that we set up earlier. I'm going to find that and say open and now it's going to ask me where do I want to pull in that RASBALL information and I'll tell it I want it to go right here in cell E6 And now it's saying, this is what we edited in that text file. We told it to prompt us for where the player ID is. So the player ID 
is going to always be in this cell. And we do want this to refresh. And any time that number changes, I want all the data to refresh. So if I change from Coco Crisp to Miguel Cabrera, I want all my RASBALL information to change. So now it's going to go get the RASBALL data for Coco Crisp. But if I want it to change to go get me Miguel Cabrera's, it's going to think for me. You'll notice this change to that number we saw earlier, 1744. It's going to go refresh and get me Miguel Cabrera's numbers. So let's say you want to just double check and make sure this is working. If I pull back up Miguel Cabrera's page, I see he had six hits in the last seven days, 20 in the last 30, and 193 for the season. But if I flip back to Coco Crisp, And I also have his page loaded here. Let's wait for that to refresh. So those numbers you see changed to 7, 29, and 134 for Coco Crisp. So you could build this out a little further. Maybe you want to evaluate trades or just have an Excel file that you use as a utility of, you know, I want to look up this player and see what he's doing. Rather than have to go out to the web every time, you could set up something like this. Hope this helps. If you're looking for more tips like this, more tools and Excel tricks you can use to become a better fantasy baseball player, stay tuned to smartfantasybaseball.com. Follow us on Twitter at smartfantasybb or subscribe to the YouTube channel where you should find this video and then you'll get notified if uh, I put out more videos that show more Excel tricks for you to see later on. Thanks, stay smart.